Hello everyone. For those who don't know, my name is Marissa. And before I begin, I just want to say I hope everyone and all their friends and family are doing well and staying healthy. And I miss having class with every single one of you. And I hope this uneasy time in our lives subsides very quickly so we can get back to our normal, probably not normal lives. So yeah, let's get down to business. So for my report, I read Reboot. Uh, Leadership and the Art of Growing Up by Jerry Kalana. Um, the reason why I chose this book was for two reasons, actually. Uh, one being the title. I've always been a natural born leader, and although I think I'm doing all right, I still have a lot of growing up to do, and I just kind of wanted to see how those two kind of coincided together. And also, I read a summary of this book, and it kind of talked about how past traumas in everyone's lives shape who they are today. And I literally said out loud, say less, that is me and my life for sure. So to begin, um, there were a lot of great takeaways without this entire book. Um, To begin throughout the book, he asks readers a series of questions and then kind of answer these questions with personal stories throughout his life. And then in the end, this kind of answers the question of who he is today and what made him who he is today um, as a person and just how he deals with relationships and all situations throughout life. Um, You know, some of these in questions, some of these questions included, you know, what are some ways that I've run myself into the ground and tired myself out? You know, what kind of person was I growing up and how does that make me a leader today? And uh, what kind of leader am I to where it leads other people? And, you know, these are really good things to think about, you know, just about your life and yourself. And it kind of gets you thinking throughout the entire uh, book. Um, So that's really good. Um, The first question that got me thinking was actually the first question. Um, And that was, how does your relationship with money uh, form who you are today with, you know, how, how, did, how was it growing up and how does it make you who you are today in ways of getting a job and, you know, staying financially stable throughout the rest of your life? Um, he elaborated on this question by telling a story of how his he had to watch his father get laid off. And, you know, this was really hard for not only him, but his father as well, because he was so used to having a job, being that person who brought money in for the family um, to where this change changed him. You know, it kind of turned him into savage mode and he would get really angry really quickly and kind of take it out on his son, who is the author. And, you know, it was just a really hard time in everyone's life in that family. And because of this, you know, Jerry Kalana grew up to be someone who worked really hard to make sure he always had a stable job and a stable income because he didn't want to relive this situation ever again. So this kind of resonated with me because throughout my life, it was just my mom and I in the house. Um, But she was the best role model I could possibly ask for. You know, I watched her work so hard um, and she always made sure I had everything I could possibly ever need. And, you know, she was a true inspiration. I was proud to be her daughter. Um, You know, she also taught me that my potential is infinite. And since she made me so proud, I grew up wanting to make her proud. And I was lucky enough to have that culture set for me. And that's why I still carry it throughout my life today. And I know I'm going to do big things uh, in this world. Um, However, (laughs) there is another side of this story. Uh, Kalana also explains how even the good times shape who we are. Without the struggles in life, we truly wouldn't be who we are. He dives deep into the fact that we are a creation of our past and we are never really alone in relationships because we are always accompanied by our ghosts. Sounds kind of scary, right? Yeah, well, he's correct. (laughs) Um, This kind of took me back because I've recently realized in my life that some of the things that happened to me in the past completely shaped who I am today. Um, or they even shape how I respond to certain situations or certain people and just, you know, life in general, how I look at it and how I respond to it. Um, as I mentioned, I grew up in a house of just my mother and I, my father lived in another town and I would visit him on court mandated holidays or breaks, like such as summer, winter and everything. 
Um, I grew up with one uncle on my mom's side in the town that I grew up in, and he never failed to make me feel like the black sheep. You know, I always felt different, um, and he made me feel like I didn't belong because, to say the least, I was the only one on that side of the family who could catch a good tan. Um, I had a male teacher in fifth grade whom I trusted too much because he had a liking for a couple of his young female students. Um, I had boyfriends when I was older who were scared of the light and potential that I had inside of me to be something big and beautiful in this world. So they acted as a third parent to me and, you know, kind of made decisions for me. And it turned me into a submissive almost, which looking back just, just sounds ridiculous, but it's, it's true. And, and all of these things led me to be the type of person that I am today. You know, at first I was someone who seeked approval um, especially through men, because I never really had that male figure in my life who I thought I could trust and who I could make proud. Um, I felt lost. I was scared. I felt weak and I didn't feel like my own individual. Um, but I soon found out that being lost is a part of the path that I was meant to take. And in all, an indicator of growth. Um, you know, I didn't wake up one day and realize that I needed to make a change. I was pushed to be uncomfortable and it forced me to grow in ways that I did not even think imaginable. You know, and now I can confidently say that I am someone who sees how bright I am and knows that I can do something big in this world and I will be damned if I let someone tell me what I can do in my life. Emphasis on the my. Um, but you know, without these struggles, I wouldn't be me. However, I'm not what happened to me. I am what I'm choosing to become. Um, the author kind of closes this book out by saying that in order to lead well, you must know yourself and not just the surface level self. You really need to know what has made you into the person that you are today. Um, and on top of that, we just need to be good people because good people make good leaders. So if you take anything away from this, I just want you to know that whatever you're going through, you are not alone. And, you know, I hope that each and every one of us feel comfortable enough to talk to the people around us and not just talk to them, listen to them about what they're going through as well. Um, you know, I also encourage you to be the person that you truly are behind the mask and not just the person you want other people to see. Because inner exploration will truly lead to outer growth. And it's a violence to ourself to not deal with what's going on inside. You know, we're never truly done growing. And to, to kind of wrap it all up, you may not know what's going on now, but later you will understand and your potential self is infinite. Thank you. <laughs>